Good evening, I'm Sheila and this is on the Healthline News Reviews and Updates. In this evening's edition, Step Server Preliminary Meeting in Nevis and donations from the University of Virginia. We'll be right back after this short break. Hey guys, did you know the Medical School of the Americas, in collaboration with the Nevis Island Administration, has a fantastic scholarship opportunity? Wait, I did hear about that. I believe they're having an open day on Wednesday, June 26th in the Memorial Square at 10 a.m. Really? So what are they offering? There are two scholarships and the priority area is health. Wow. I want to be a doctor. Eh, eh? So what you waiting for? We'll see you there on June 26th in the Memorial Square at 10 a.m. It's your, your turn, turn to, to reach for the stars. stars. Started out with just one dream, resources could not be seen. Remember when you stayed up late at night trying to work out the in between. Welcome back. On Wednesday, the 5th of June, potential numerators from Nevis attended a preliminary meeting. Mrs. Nadine Carty Keynes, coordinator of the Health Promotion Unit, co led the information sharing session with a live telephone link from Dr. Marissa Carty from St. Kitts. I met earlier with Mrs. Carter Keynes, who gave an overview of the STEPS survey. The STEPS survey will be looking at risk factors for non communicable diseases that we call NCDs in St. Kitts and Nevis. And this survey is conducted by the Ministries of Health in both St. Kitts and Nevis in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. The survey results will be used to assist the Ministries of Health to plan strategies and to develop health programs that will target efforts to lower the risk factors of the NCDs that were listed by Dr. Marissa Cati. Persons or uh, households participating in the STEP survey, the information gathered will be treated in strict confidence, uh, names or location or household information will not be shared. Just the results of the survey that will be used for persons within the Ministry of Health in order for us to come up with strategies and programs to mitigate NCDs in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Dr. Marissa Carty was contacted via telephone link. She spoke with us on Healthline about what methods would be used and the aims of the federal survey. The STEP survey is a three-phase population-wide survey that is expected to gather information about the risk factors for NCDs. NCDs are non-communicable diseases that persons may have that you don't get from anybody else, but you develop them based on your lifestyle. The risk factors that we are going to be looking at during this survey are unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, alcohol use, and tobacco use. As I said, it's a three-phase or three-step survey. During the first step, persons will be asked to answer questions via a questionnaire that will give us the information about the risk factors. In the, step, in the second step, we will be taking physical measurements. So we'll be measuring your height, your weight in order to calculate your BMI, and we'll also be taking your blood pressure. All of that will be done on the first day. The, the participants will then be given an appointment card, which will require our clinical health professionals to come back on the following day to follow up with the third step. The third step is your biochemical measurement, where we'll be using a point of care machine in order to calculate your triglycerides, total cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, as well as your glucose, fasting glucose. During this survey, we will also be testing our salt content in the participants, and so the participants will also be required to give us a urine.
green sample as well. A three-day extensive training program in preparation for the federal survey will be offered to hopeful numerators. Training includes tabulation of answers and hands-on practical training in obtaining accurate blood pressure and BMI reading. The survey will resume in July and completion is expected within six weeks. And in other news, a donation from the University of Virginia, Dr. Richardson, faculty members and students from the University of Virginia School of Medicine paid a courtesy call to the Junior Minister of Health, the Honourable Hazel Brandy Williams, to offer a donation of thanks and appreciation to the government of Nevis. For the past eight years, the University of Virginia have sent multitudes of public health students to undertake research studies in Nevis. Dr. Richardson, ahead of her retirement from service, commended the Ministry of Health for their continued partnership and support offered to her and her students. It's always a pleasure and a joy to be here in Nevis, who have been our primary research partners for eight years now. Uh, as I begin to contemplate retirement, I wanted to leave something with our dear partners to express our deep gratitude for the partnership and the expertise and the knowledge that they've shared with us over these years. And so the gifts that we'd like to share with you, uh, some are from the university and one is from me personally. The first is a book which is a compendium of all of the research studies that have been conducted over the last eight years to provide you with the actual data uh, to inform health practice and health policy. The second is a mobile projector to be used uh, at the ministry's discretion uh, so that when you go out into the community and so you have a portable projector uh, to conduct uh, whatever business and uh, educational sessions that you would like. The final gift is from me personally, because you have always made me feel like an vision, and uh, which I, uh, which is very dear to my heart. And so, what I wanted to bring to you was a laptop computer uh, to be used however you like. Uh, with a little plate on it to remind you that even though I am back in the United States, I still hold Nevis dear to my heart. Junior Minister of Health, Honourable Hazel Brandy Williams, graciously accepted the gifts on behalf of and for the Minister of Health, the Premier Brantley. I would like to say a hearty thank you to Dr. Richardson for her very fine gesture in presenting us with these gifts. I was told when I came into health last year that one of the partners that we have done work with over the past eight years was the University of Virginia through the um, kind courtesies of Dr. Richardson and her team. And so I am eternally grateful for the work that she has done over the eight years, which has now been documented for us to use in um, future development of our policies here on Nevis. I m would want to say that as you journey into retirement, we are hoping that you would have left the systems in place that this relationship could continue. We are committed to the continued development and the continued partnership so that in the future, you can continue to come to Nevis and do your research we are certain that the persons who you have done research with in the past are eternally grateful. And so I would want to say on their behalf, on behalf of the Ministry of Health, as well as from the, the Premier, who is the Senior Minister of Health, we say a hearty thank you to you and your team for coming over the past eight years. After the break, Horsford Screening Day, and in international news, regional stakeholders meet to shake the salt habit. We'll be right back after these messages. Safe sex is great sex, so you better use a latex. This message was brought to you courtesy of the Health Promotion Unit Meeting. <laughs> Yalla WhatsApp and a same text. Me see the SMS. Me a fish what it is. Send me a pic of yourself. One of you know where. 
I have too much self-respect to send you a pic of you know where. If you really love me, you will do it. If you really love me, you wouldn't ask. You matter to your family, to your friends, to your community, to you. Remember, you matter. This message was brought to you by the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, and the Nevis Health Promotion Unit. Welcome back. On Saturday, the 15th of June, there was a steady traffic of pedestrians heading towards Horsford's building centre for an annual event. For the last 10 years, Horsford have organised for men in Nevis a free screening day. It is no means by a coincidence that the screening is held on the Saturday before Father's Day. Manager of the home building centre, Mr Oscar Walters, expressed the importance of such events, particularly for men. He also acknowledged the help from community nursing and the health promotion units in offering their annual assistance. Um, we started off um, this partnership some practically over 10 years ago. Um, we started with um, nurse Lorraine Archibald and uh, we have moved, I mean, in great strides over the years. We have seen an increased um, attendance by fathers and non-fathers as well, uh, males, they have shown up, I mean, in numbers to do their regular testing and support, um, blood pressure, sugar um, tests, HIV, HIV testing and so forth. So um, we think it's a very good um, gesture and we have continued that partnership over the years. And I also want to say thank you to the team, um, team of nurses who normally show up every year and uh, the SL Hospital staff and on behalf of the SL Hospital group of companies and the managing, managers, directors, we want to say a happy Father's Day to all. Junior Minister of Health, the Honourable Hazel Brandy Williams, came in support of the Men's Screening Day and congratulated Mr Walters in his initiative. She also used the opportunity to thank the Government of Japan for the Medical Mobile Unit, which was used for the first time for rapid HIV testing. Today we are at the building centre at Hosford's um, doing the Father's Day screening. And we are standing here under the medical mobile unit that was presented to us a couple of weeks ago from the Japanese government. And so before I go further, I would like to place on record our profound thanks to the Japanese government for this very important unit. And in cases like these, we are able to use this very important unit. It is the first time it has been used since we received the gift, and I must say that it has come in very handy for events such as these. I will now go on to say that um, over the past 10 years, the Ministry of Health has partnered with Hosford in this very important screening um, activity. As I spoke with the manager, the present manager of Hosford, it was his brainchild that they do something for fathers. They are aware that men um, not necessarily like to go to the health centers and so on the, the Saturday before Father's Day, they bring the health center to them. So I must applaud the efforts of Hosford's through its general manager, Mr. Walters, for such an important initiative over the past 10 years. David Walwin of Fit Wellness gave positive comments regarding the Health Screen Initiative. Hey, I commend uh, the Health Promotion Unit for the initiative. This is a wonderful initiative you guys are doing uh, in collaboration with Horsford. And I was quite happy to be able to get my, um, my blood pressure check and my blood glucose levels. Good. And uh, based on my results, I'm, I'm, I'm in excellent shape. Mrs Nadine Carty Keynes, coordinator of HPU, gave a roundup of the day's session. We're here at the Hosford's Building Center in Stony Grove and we would have just completed an outreach screening for Father's Day that Hosford has put on in collaboration with the Ministry of Health. And today we had quite a number of persons who accessed the screening services, which were blood pressure screening, blood sugar, HIV testing, nutrition counseling and BMI, which is body mass index. And we're very happy that persons were able to get this opportunity to know their numbers 
and to ensure that we have a healthy nation. And we also want to thank Hotspots for taking this initiative every year for the past several years to offer the screening service to its clients or patrons. The free screening ran from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. The session comprised of blood sugar testing, blood pressure, BMI reading and nutrition advice and counselling, and rapid HIV testing, plus information and free condoms for men and women. And in international news, regional stakeholders meet to shake the salt habit. More than 50 government officials, manufacturers, distributors, restaurant owners, civil society representatives and stakeholders from other private and public sectors gathered in Jamaica recently for a two-day meeting to tackle the scourge of salt consumption in the region. Hypertension, strokes, heart disease and diabetes are among the five leading causes of death in the Caribbean. These diseases represent not only a major health crisis but also a serious economic challenge. The increased risk of cardiovascular diseases and stroke has been associated with excessive salt intake and hypertension. Dr. C. James Hospitalis, CAFRA Executive Director, noted in his address that the Caribbean is well known for its high dietary salt consumption from processed foods and as added ingredients during the cooking and at the table. Studies have shown that most people consume too much salt around twice the recommended maximum level intake. This high consumption increases the risk for high blood pressure, stroke and heart disease. Salt has many uses as a preservative in foods, as flavour enhancer and contributor to the texture of foods. Our bodies also require sodium to maintain the proper balance of water and minerals, contract and relax muscles and other vital functions. It is recommended that we use just under one teaspoon per day for this purpose. The regional meeting on the reduction of salt reduction of salt consumption for the prevention of control and non-communicable diseases in the Caribbean took place at the University of the West Indies regional headquarters earlier in June. The meeting sought to formulate a regional framework to reduce salt sodium in the food environment for the prevention and control of NCDs in the Caribbean. And that concludes this week's edition of On the Healthline. I'm Sheila. Thank you for watching.